looked at him. I said, how long is this going to take? Not long. I said, okay, what have I got to do? And he told me, he handed me this, well, y'all caught a ski mask, you know, and a hood, and it had the eyes and nose, mouth. And uh, he said, put this on. He said, go over here. He says, see a light blink, go to the light. It's a boat. Put this on before you get there. Don't say a word. If somebody talks to you, you don't answer them. Do what they tell you to do, okay? So I got over and I waited, and then the light blinked, and I put the hood on, and I went to the boat. The boat I'm on is what we use to mullet fish here, and it's uh, got the motor in the center of the boat up front. So I went up there, and uh, we steered from the front, which is a little tiller handle motor, 50 horse on it, about a 19-foot wooden well boat. So I got there, and they put this stuff on the damn boat, and uh, looked at me and says, go into Sandfly Pass at the island, sat there, you see a light blink, go to the bridge. Now the funny part about this is I did. Now I get there and uh, pull up to the bridge and they unload the boat. They tell me to go out in the bay, bail water in this boat, damn near sink it, bail it out, get everything out of it. I still don't know what the hell I've got. I never heard of it, didn't know it. Well, I imagine I've heard of it, right, you right. know, but never used it at that point. Yes, sir. So I got out of the bay, bailed out, and I'm thinking to myself, my God, I got to go to fish. So I went on fishing, had 200 pounds of fish. Got, now, the man did tell me that if I would go with him, I would have the 400 pounds of fish at the fish house that morning. Well, I wasn't believing because I didn't want my ass tore up by my dad, right. you know. So I went out and I had 200 pounds of fish. When I got to the fish house, I pulled up and got out of the boat, walked up there, looked at the man and says, I need to weigh these fish out. He turned and looked at me, he said, you want me to put them with the 400 pounds you just brought in here? Or do you want them on the Mars? Put them on the Mars. Now, three days later, I'm sitting here at my mom and dad's house and the phone rings and my mother says, Kent, Philip wants you to come to his house. Philip was the one that I, done the thing, job for. Gotcha. So I get up there and I walk in the house and he looks at me and, uh, and I said, you want to see me? He said, yep. And he had one of these beer bags, a little paper beer bag. Yeah. And he says, yeah. here. And I called, I said, what is it? He said, that's your pay. I said, pay. He said, yeah, you get paid for that. I said, really? I said, how much is it? He said, 15,000. Yeah. thousand. God dang it. I'd never heard of that damn much. was less seen it. No. And I'm sitting there and uh, he looked at me and this is the funny part. You yeah, know, yeah, at this yeah. point, I'm, I, I know it's wrong in my mind, but, you know, hey. the money's going to overtake it. He said, I've got a job tonight. Do you want to go? Yes. I, was I got you. My head no, yeah, yeah, yeah. And my damn mouth was saying yeah. So now i got a problem. You this is three nights since that happened. So now I'm back, heading back to the house, and I go to my bedroom, and I'm sitting there on the edge of the bed, and I'm looking around, all right, where do I put this? Under the bed. Under the mattress. No. Nope. Mother was stripped the damn bed. Yeah. All this shit, shit. In the jacket pocket. No, I can't do that. Damn it, can I put it in the drawer here? Pull the drawer. I, no, she washes clothes and folks puts them up. So I'm sitting there and I'm looking and I'm taking the drawers out and doing this and that. And I look down there, take the bottom drawer out because I'm feeling around yeah. in the dresser trying to find a plate. And I look down there, here's this piece of wood in the bottom drawer. And I pulled my pocket knife out and it's got them little nails in them, so I'm prying it up. And I, man, that's good, look at there. I started stacking the money in there. Now I done, now I went out there and I looked at the daddy and I said, daddy, I says, uh, he would go on fishing, I want you to let me go. Yeah. And uh, so it worked that night, you know. So I got her caught fish. Yeah. I always had fish at the fish house. So money at the fish house is what it was. Yeah, yeah. So, the next time I done it, I looked at Daddy, I said, Daddy, look, I said, if you don't mind, I just need to think. Uh, I said, me and the girlfriend is arguing. I said, I just need time to think. Okay. Well, after I'd done about five jobs, I come home, and I walked in the door, and Daddy's sitting at the table. <laughs> Daddy, Daddy drinks vodka, and he's alcoholic. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he has a can of Coke. He takes swig, swig. Yeah. I walk in. Now, the funny part of this, the mobile home, you walk in the door and the kitchen table's here because they had the damn thing set up where it's backwards. All right, kitchen table here, kitchen there, and living room right out in front of you. Yeah. All right, so I come walking in, and <laughs> the door, 
Daddy turned around, he got that damn look. Who in the fuck did you kill? That's the bottle. Take that to it, slam it down. You just ain't killed no fucking body. What the hell's wrong with you? Son, what bank did you rob? You robbed no goddamn bank. My mind ain't yeah. thinking about the money. Yeah, yeah. All right. That ain't what my mind went to. What the fuck are you talking about? Are you drunk or something? No, I ain't drunk. Well, around the corner come my mama. Yeah, that Brown paper bag. Do you remember those stored Army and Navy? Yes. Uh, you remember them fucking bags? Yes. She's not yes. yes. <laughs> and she come around there to the table and she yeah. dumped this bag out of the table. Where'd this money come from? I said, Daddy, I said, I've been hauling pot. Yeah. Don't start your goddamn shit. Like, Don't start your goddamn shit, son. He said, Your goddamn mama's been hauling lots of fans around this goddamn house. All her goddamn married life. And she ain't married no, made no goddamn money like there. And don't try to tell me you're a better fisherman than I am because you're not. <laughs> so where in the goddamn hell did the money come from, son? I said, Daddy, I said, I've been hauling marijuana. What the goddamn hell is Mary Jarwana? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. My mama, this is her. Oh, God, Randall. He's on them goddamn drugs and them kids are on. He's going to die or go to prison. Well, yeah. half that shit was right. <laughs> right on. So... I looked at him, and the worst part about this is my mother's family, yeah. uh, which wasn't really family stepbrothers, half them. Step is whenever they marry, families already got them, right? No, half, it's, it's my, my, uh, which one's my yeah, mother? Yeah, yeah, my yeah. mother's yeah. mother, yeah. 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 there yeah. was three of them yeah. kids. There was uh, my mother, her brother, and the sister. And then she married the man that had three kids. So that's Step. It is. Okay. Yes. Not to be confused with incest. Well, not them because they wasn't no family. Right. But uh, <laughs> that come later. Even uh, I wanted to fuck my cousin, she was hot. Oh. We know what your family's about now. Hey, <laughs> this is real, guys. I mean, it's real. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's from he's from Eastern Kentucky. <laughs> Cuban from Kentucky. Well, hey, I'm from Tennessee. <laughs> Smoke, I'm Smoky Indiana, Mountains. I'm from outside Indianapolis. There we go. Then I grew but, up in uh, so did, I, but, but, uh, what about, hey, did they ever drop it by planes? They did, but not with us. I got We was by water. Uh, this is the funny part. Now, people always looked at us and said, why didn't you ever haul cocaine smaller, made more money? Yeah. Because we was Indian. I'm happy. We knew the marijuana had uh, the herb. additional purposes the herb. yeah and uh we knew it wouldn't yeah, hurt you yeah but we also knew the cocaine would yes yes and, uh, even back then people, yes we they would use it and uh actually the marijuana uh what was down here the indians had stuff they would take it and uh they would take the stems and the heavy part of the leaf yeah. is what i'm gonna call it yeah and they would take it and they would put it with a little bit of water and they would boil it, and then they would take a stone, and they crush it. Okay. And they would make a paste out of this. Wow. And if you uh, had a hurt or yeah. something put yeah. it on it, or if you would say that you had a headache or something, yes. ache, you would eat it. Certain amount of it. Yes. All right. Well, we we knew it was that. Yeah. Now they Indians did smoke it, so we knew what smoking yes. it was. But yes, they smoked it like a uh, well, like we would a pipe of cigarettes or tobacco. Pipe. Yes. All right. So. Uh, the Indians, uh, it would make you peaceful. Yeah. It would take a, it would take a man that was too totally mad, ready to kill the world. Yes. And if you smoked it, it would just mellow you out. Yes. And back then, you didn't have to worry about potato chips and shit and getting the munchies because what you gonna eat grass? Right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the cocaine we knew damn good and well what it would yeah. do. Yeah. So we we stayed away from it. We made a pact within the family. Yeah. That the first one that hauled cocaine would never work for the family again. When I say family, there was 29 wow. of us. The whole That's family. Right. This is what, now you had to be uh, cousins to us and you had to live here on this island so or somewhere close. close to it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because we knew damn good and well that uh, if I got out here on a boat and we was coming yes. in and didn't care what the weather was, you ain't gonna let the family go. You got to And yes. we've done shit that, uh, that we, the Coast Guard had a boat surrounded yeah. And we knew that they did, and we went out and got it. We went in hurricanes, we went in trouble. And still came back. The night, this is one that a lot of people, uh, that when I done the book, there was a few of them asked me to put this in there. Yes. 
the night of Operation Everglades 1, the first time they blocked the roads off and shit, we had a job come in. We brought dump trucks in with dirt, dumped the dirt, put the marijuana on the thing, took a backhoe and put the dirt back on top of it. At five o'clock in the morning, sent them out, loaded with marijuana, through the roadblock and handed them the driver's license and went on with it. Got through. Wow. Yeah. What is the what's the scariest moments you've ever had that you think? The scariest but see I've uh, I sunk a couple boats and then I've uh out here we stayed, me and my brother in law, swam about a mile in offshore, northwestern broke down. You better get that, that's gone. But uh it's down there. Uh you better get there, get it real quick, it ain't no board yet. But anyway, that wasn't the scariest moment. The scariest moment is the funniest tale one of the funny tales they come to me i had a 75 foot boat and uh i had some people come to me so look i need you to go to columbia and i pick up 15,000 pounds well i said okay and i said you know it's gonna cost this amount of money i'm gonna take this back water class i said well, they said that ain't a problem i went across and uh the boats were already set up here the family was gonna meet us in the smaller boats and uh bring it on in yeah well, I got over there and got loaded on the way back. We have the radar back then uh, was 120 miles, which it wouldn't actually put out that far, receive that far, about 60 miles or so of okay. wood. So I had mine tuned in and I was coming back and uh, the radar, it looked like birds everywhere, but boats. And I told the guy, I said, you know what? I says, uh, we're had, I says, dry Tortugas is loaded with Coast Guard. <clears throat> I says, it back towards Fort Myers, I said, so I can't run that away. And you damn sure didn't go in Mexican waters. Okay. No, unless you had them paid off, you didn't do as no no. So that you're they, you you you'd have been there and you're you dead man. kept the boat, the marijuana was stayed on the boat and they'd have had you in prison or they'd have killed you. Yeah. And uh now you could have and we did after a while figure it out that uh that you could buy them off two years fine as you get them of course. money. And so on the way back I had uh, this coast guard was come up close to us about five miles away and I'd see him coming so I just reached up there and I had the guy on the boat with me a couple of guys I just pulled the damn motors I had this 75 footer uh, I had twin 1292 Detroit diesel turbos and I had them pumping out uh, over 1100 horsepower damn near 1200 because the injectors and everything else I was done and then I had a fella put what they called hydrofoils what hydrofoils it was uh, trim tabs quarterback from the bow which was three foot by 18 inches wide, and it lifted. Gotcha. Well, from the aft forward quarter, they was uh, 18 by eight inches, and it lift that damn boat up and bust that, break air, break suction. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. 42 miles an hour in a heartbeat. That son of a bitch would run. Normal boat, she would run about, uh, about, about 24 to 26. Yeah. So the only thing I've done was put 20 on it. Wow. Now I put 25,000 on the deck, this boat still run. So the 15,000, and I had a guy that uh, had took, the, this was a Mack on Kingfisher boat, so he had the ice coolers up front. Okay. Well, I had a false bulkhead put in, and under that, the coolers were cut off, and you could put 25,000 under them damn things, and you would open the coolers up, and look like they went right on down the floor. 25,000 pounds. But it didn't. And uh, you take that bulkhead, you could go up there and shake it, however you couldn't get it out unless you knew what you was doing. And the only other way to get back to the engine department was either through a back hatch in the back or the engine box. So we had that and when they got started coming to us, I just pulled the damn motors in neutral. Sat there and I looked at the guy and I said, well, break out the bottle. I said, they're coming to us, we might as well enjoy this one. And we had her hid, but you, you know, you never take a chance. So they knew you went down there. They knew you was coming back. Well, when we're sitting there having that drink. The boat would come up and he turned and left. I thought, what the shit? You know? So I'm sitting there and I get looking. I'm facing Columbia. Wow. The boat had turned around, drifting. I said, son of a bitch. I told him, I said, you know what? I said, we're going back through the gap. It's 250 miles. So I just placed her in reverse. And we sat there and they would come up close to yeah. us and where they could see us wow. and get the hell away from us. But we, they thought we was going down. I got you. We was facing Columbia. 
So we got to watching the radar and a little bit, everything cleared out. Yeah. I told him, I said, we got to run. I said, we got to do it, we got to do it now. So I put that goddamn thing out of top and we come on by, when we got down to, by Dry Tortugas, yeah. we're in the golf then. Right. And I just brought her on in. Why this was so scary, because we knew we was going yes. to jail. The best part about it is, got it in and everything else, so I had to go to Miami to meet with the people, get our pay and all that shit. Looked at them, I said, boys, I saw them tell you I said, I sweated this one. Yeah. Uh, they said, you did? And I said, damn right. I said, Coast Guard. I said, I don't know why in hell we ain't busted. He said, well, there ain't nothing they could have done to you. I said, what do you mean? I said, you ain't got 5,000 pounds of pot, just enough to pay for the coffee bean you're hauling. Yeah. They was having a big party in, in Miami. Yeah. And everybody there got together and wanted this Colombian coffee. Yes, yes. All right, so the party was gonna have uh, so much coffee, That's but they wanted this coffee and they kept it stored. They age, when they do this coffee bean, they age it. Gotcha. Okay, well, I don't know nothing about coffee. Right, I don't right, drink right. it. Right. Well, very, that was very about as scary as it was to be the funniest. For five, for, for, for 5,000 for, for pounds of pot wasn't shit. Because hell, you did, you did a 15, yeah. One job we done down here yes. was the largest that ever was brought into the United States. How? 122,000 pounds. And where did it come from? Columbia. Wow. Come in on come in on a few boats. It took 15 T crafts, which is 24 foot long, 10 foot wide. We had twin 225s on them. 8,000 pounds we could put on them to run. We didn't put that much on them. We'd put about five or 6,000 so we could run good and bring them in, and we did. You boys know every corner of this place. There is nobody that knows this water like we know it. The whole family. Yeah. And your whole family, 29. Wow. My dad, there was six of them boys. There yep. was no girls. Uh, every one of them was in it. Me and my brother, my brother-in-law, uh, we had the Stokes' family to us. Yep. And Brothers, cousins, still, brother-in-law. Uh, tight, tight-knit oh family. Oh, my God. It's still tight here. Yeah. yeah we need to get started on our okay. Hey. Whenever you want to get it, just say it. Where's he at? 